that is one freaking huge spider. I won't zoom in any further. It's the beginning of the video. I know there's some people who will get freaked out by it. I thought maybe I needed to save it, but then I realized that when I first saw the spider in there, it was crawling up from the bottom of the pool up the side to the surface of the water. He's having a good time. Seems to be enjoying life, getting around just fine. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I know some people don't like spiders, so that's it. I won't go into depth on spider anymore. I've got some packages here. I think that the beginning of this video is probably going to be me opening up plant-related mail. I have some fertilizer coming in uh, and uh, some fertilizer paraphernalia, if that's what you would call it, coming in. Supplies, for the most part. I want to get the hose situation worked out. Get some planting done. That's going to be an objective in pretty much every vlog for the rest of the, well, spring through summer, right? Planting season. First, get this opened up. Go have a peek inside. Oh, that is bright green. Very, very, very bright green. Okay, just get that out of there. Come on, get out of the box. New hose. I know, there's already a new hose over there. If you've been watching the videos, you know. There's just been all kinds of hose drama going on. Lots of problem with my hose here. The one over here is a one inch hose. No reel fits it. Well, they make hose reels that fit them, but they're like industrial for barns or warehouses or firehouses. And they range from like $400 to $1,200. And they don't even look nice. Like it's not something I would want in my backyard. So that's always been an issue. I've never had a reel that worked for that hose. The hose that was over here broke. It just got old, started crumbling, and you know, it's when it's time to get rid of the hose that's over 10 years old. So I got rid of that and then went and had to get a new hose reel too because it turned out that the end of the hose had like calcified itself on there. I couldn't get it off. Bought a new hose. Here it is, neon orange. It's the only color it came in, but I freaking love this hose. It's extremely flexible and it's durable. I go right over it with the Gorilla Cart, doesn't have any issues, doesn't even kink. It's a lot easier to handle than the red hose over here. And it's 100 feet, so it's working for just about the entire backyard. I think the other hose that I got rid of must have been a 50 footer, because it really, it didn't go very far. This one over here I think is maybe 75 feet at the most. It's definitely not 100. There's some backstory there. I got a new hose reel, mention that. It does not work on the three quarter inch hose. I did some research, lots of reading, cannot find a an, a, a, an, an enclosed hose reel that will work for a three quarter inch hose. They all say half inch and five eighths inch hose. The problem is I have absolutely horrible water pressure. So when I go down to a five eighths inch hose, generally my water pressure is just trash. But I thought maybe the issue that I was having with that old five eighths inch hose and the really bad water pressure was just, it was really old. Maybe that calcification that had seared itself so that the end of the hose was stuck, like really, really sealed inside of the hose reel. Maybe that had gotten clogged up over the years. Who knows? So I went ahead, I got a 5 8 inch hose. I figure we'll put them side by side. Maybe the water pressure won't be that bad coming out of this hose. That's what I'm hoping, because if that's the case, then I will try and use this on the hose reel that I was going to return. It's right there sitting over there, right above my finger, waiting to be returned. I assume that this should work on there. If not, then that means it was just a really bad hose reel. So that'd be good to know. I have it ready to be returned regardless. If the pressure's still good and it works with that hose reel, then I've got everything solved over here. This hose, the one inch hose, it's been nothing but a problem for me over the last few years. It's constantly kinking. It is so big that it always does whatever it wants to do. You hook it to a spring cord and the spring cord flops right over. It's just been a pain. So with that hose, I will go ahead and wind it up. And I'm not going to get rid of it. It's still a perfectly good hose. It's just going to end up in the garage in case of an emergency, meaning in case I lose a hose or have to pump the pool out again like I did last year, something happens where I need a big hose, then I will have that. And then move the orange hose, the new one, over to where this hose is and put that one on one of those... <laughs> cart reels. That was so much backstory. I'm so sorry. Was that boring? It was probably really boring. Is even though I can't find an enclosed hose reel that will work on this three quarter inch hose, or at least that says it will work on them, there are some out there that would probably work. I just haven't tried them. There are plenty of the ones that are just an open cart and I don't, that's not something I want over here against the house. I think it wouldn't look great with the hose being bright orange, 
but where I have things set up over here on that side of the yard, it doesn't matter. It's going to be over there in between the needle palms. We won't even be able to see that there's a bright orange hose on a open reel. That'll be obvious. Is, that, is it making sense now? Yeah, that's why I have a new hose here. This is a 5 8 inch Flexzilla. I can tell just from touching this, it's not as tough as the other hose that's over there, but it's supposed to be a nice, like, floppy, easy to work with hose. And that's what I wanted. It's the color is intense. I'm just gonna be happy to have a hundred foot hose out here. That would be fantastic. Cause really this hose right here, it's reaching just about everywhere back here that I need it to. I didn't even realize that length was an issue. I knew the girth was an issue because I just can't control the dang thing. I had no idea that part of the problem was just that it wasn't long enough. I could have sworn that that was a hundred foot hose. So I was like, well, they don't really typically sell them longer than that. So the fact that I like have an area over here that I can barely reach with either hose, must just be a common problem. Didn't even, it just hadn't even occurred to me. Cause I wasn't going to get rid of that hose because it hadn't broken yet. It seems wasteful. Don't want to put things in the landfill if you don't have to. So I just stuck with that hose over there to do everything on this side of the yard, even though the pressure sucked and it like reached to like right around there in the garden. And this red hose over here reaches to like right around here. So there's this gap right in there where it was extremely difficult to water not having that issue anymore and that's great i it's nobody cares about any of this i'll go ahead and get this set up on the hose reel see if it even works on the hose reel if it does work on the hose reel then i'll do a pressure test well maybe i should do the pressure test first that might make the most sense if it doesn't work on the hose reel that doesn't matter right because i will get a new hose reel right but the 5h hose I'm pretty much set on for keeping over here. It's still, I really don't understand why this three quarter inch doesn't fit on a hose reel. I know that there's different capacities and they're made for different sizes, but when you pick that hose up and you're holding it in your hand, it feels just like any normal garden hose. So it's possible that maybe that hose reel is just a complete and total piece of trash. Wouldn't surprise me, but it's weird that it's like the third one that hasn't worked for my hoses. That's why I'm just thinking that I just need to go down a size to make it work. Just make life easier and just submit and do what I'm supposed to do instead of trying to make things work that aren't made to go together. Well, I have to say, it's not feeling like the pressure is going to be that great. It's not bad. It might be about the same as the other one. It does, this is going to be a kink monster though. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Potentially too flexible. I don't know, hard to say because, you know, just set it up. I suppose there's probably a more scientific way I could look into the difference in the water pressure. I, there's definitely a difference, though, right? I mean, look at that. Put that so it's right on that line there. That's going out probably, I'd say maybe three feet, something like that. And then with this one right on the same line, no, not even close. Look at the difference in water pressure when you go down to the 5 8 inch from the 3 quarter. Dang, I was really hoping that that was just something that wasn't true. Like maybe the big hose having more pressure to it was just something in my head, but right, you can look, you can see it right there. Big difference in water pressure. Well, now I don't know what I want to do after all that talking. Still don't have a plan. Cause the plan was that it was just gonna work and that the water pressure would be just the same coming out of this one compared to the other one and everything would be fine but there's a significant difference there this alone oh, come on that's so much better look at that it really I probably doesn't seem like something that matters but when you're out here spending a lot of time watering washing stuff off the patio and everything having good water pressure makes a huge difference and I now have three obnoxiously brightly colored hoses sitting out on the patio this looks great doesn't it I think what I'm going to do is stick with the orange hose over here give the green hose to my sister and brother-in-law because they need a longer hose on the side of their house if they don't want it i'll send it back the red hose i guess i'll just keep and do what i was talking about with the cart if it doesn't work on the cart i'm going to get rid of it replace it with one of these orange hoses the orange hose is going to go onto a cart even though i don't want a cart over here i can just put one of those lattice privacy things around it so that it won't look as ugly I don't, I don't know what else to do here. i am pretty much run out of options. I'm going to return that hose reel, so I may as well grab one of the larger ones and just give it a try. 
and see if it works. I doubt it will work, but who knows? I'm gonna be getting a cart anyways for this hose, so I'll return that one, grab a new enclosed hose reel and a cart, and uh, then hopefully, you know, something, it's gonna work out. I don't want this to be much more of the video. There are other things coming in the mail, either tonight or tomorrow. Okay, so gonna have to return that. Not great, but it's fine. Y'all saw that water pressure, it wasn't gonna work. It's been a day or two, Remember, I had to wait for a couple packages to show up so I could finish talking about what else is coming. Anything look different out here? There's no big neon orange hose. Oh, what happened? What, what, I, found, I found a hose reel. More money than I wanted to spend, but it's getting the job done. It's not enclosed. Not crazy about that. There's going to be a bright orange hose hanging out over here in the garden. I think that I can just put something around it. You know, they have those little privacy things you can put around like air conditioning units. There are lots of different privacy panels or, you know, a bush something i don't know maybe once it's back where it's supposed to go it's not going to bother me as much this is a gorilla brand hose reel it's the one made for i believe 150 feet of hose there is no labeling saying whether or not it could handle a three quarter inch hose i got online did a bunch of reading there are people asking about it some people said yeah some people said no i have to say i really like it function wise i like it this is not it it's not the automatic kind where this piece moves on its own you got to do that on your own, but that's okay because there's a spot for you to put your foot. So you can be over here and you can crank it and then use the other hand while you're cranking to adjust things. My main thing is just that it works. One thing that's not so hot about it is that if you let go, <laughs> like if at some point there's a knot you need to go untangle, you let go of that, it starts to unwind. That's not great, but otherwise my bar is so low at this point, I'm just happy to have a hose reel that fits the freaking hose and get that up and off the garden and get that area cleaned up, find the stone that this is supposed to sit on. It's under there somewhere and get that put away. I'm going to move this lawn waste bin to the driveway. It doesn't need to be out here. This is what the skimmers get dumped into. I don't think it's that big of a deal to just walk around the corner to grab the lid, bring the lid out, dump the stuff and take it back over there. Yeah, okay, it's an extra 50, 60 feet, that's fine, get your steps in. And then lastly, the third thing that's been bugging me in this area for years, hasn't just been that the hose reel was ugly, now it's uglier, but the hose is better. Hasn't just been that this yard waste bin has been out here, easy solution, move that. It's these things, these stupid freaking poles. I hate having them out here, they're ugly. Old tooths, they don't go back together properly. I bought a new one, this one, it doesn't work anymore. It's stuck in this position, so it's useless. Got a new pole to use on this brush right here for the bottom. Eventually, I'll go ahead and get a new pole for that one when this one starts, starts when this one stops working. No reason to do that right now. I don't want to throw it away if it's still good. That pole is still mostly good. I don't think you can recycle these. So I want to use them as long as I can. And they're old. They're well over 10 years old. So it's time to go ahead and replace them. Not surprised that they're breaking down. The reason that any of that matters is that this is black. What's good about that is that black matches the fence over there, right? Now you're probably wondering, well, Jeff, why does that matter? Why are we talking about the colors of the poles? I'm gonna show you. Because I also got these. These are hooks that go onto the fence to hold the pool equipment. Now, I think technically these are meant for a railing. They'll be in the driveway. I think I can hang them down low enough so it's not gonna be all that obvious. And it's just, it'll look better if the poles are black right? Because it'll blend in more of the fence. The blue poles, like, that might be kind of tacky. HOA might have an issue with it. So, the, yeah, eventually they'll both be black poles and it'll look a lot better. Oh, wait, they do get smaller. So they go from being that big for a railing to, I'm sorry, it's not in focus, but I only have one hand here. The camera doesn't want to behave. There's not much I can do it. Come on, camera. There we, nope, it's not going to do it. Well, you get the point. I can adjust it, which is what I wanted. So you can put it over here, take it down to its smallest size, tighten up the nut, and it's all done. Okay, let's see here. That one goes in right there. Pop that one right there. Oh, this is perfect. I'm like, you can't, I don't think that that looks that bad. You can barely even see it because the arms are grown up in front of everything. I think I need to do some pruning over here to make this work better, but there's a place to put them. All these years, I just needed a place to put them. Now I have one. This is fantastic. The blue pole definitely sticks out more. So I'd say it'd be worthwhile when that fully breaks, which I would imagine will probably be sometime this year. I'll replace it with the black and they'll both match and yeah that's oh, i'm so happy right now i know it doesn't seem that significant but it's something that's just been bugging me for years i'm sure i've talked about it in garden tours before about how i just i hate seeing those things over here I have this beautiful garden bed and then those poles in the trash can 
simple solution with the trash can. It's just, you just gotta move it. But the poles, I never knew what to do with those. Yeah, okay, it was, was much easier to just walk over to the wall to grab the equipment we didn't need to scoop or brush the pool. But I think it's just one of those things where over time, get into the habit of just walking around the corner to grab the pool equipment. It's not that big of a deal, right? And look, there's still clutter everywhere, but it already looks so much better just from not having those poles in that trash can there. I still have a hoe over there and the hose is still out on the patio. You know, there's plenty to do, right? I got a lot of cleaning up to do from all the stuff I was doing trying to get the hose situation worked out, but this is good. Finally, that stuff's gone. Did also, this showed up, you didn't, you missed the unboxing. It's just a sprayer, I needed to spray. I needed to get the neem on the plants inside of the grow space so that, well, so I can get them moved out here. If they needed another neeming for the spider mites, I'd like to move them out this week or next week. Could have probably done it a few weeks ago, but you know, there's other things happening out here. Wanted to wait for the trees to flush up more so there'd be more shade and better pest management. So that's it, it's just a sprayer. You're not missing anything, it's the Husqvarna. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. There it is, that's the name. I really like it, uh, other than the fact that the one that I had for like a year and a half, two years, the top of it got like fused in place and I couldn't get it off. So I had to buy a whole new one because it, I, I don't know what happened to it. So from now on with the new one, I'm gonna remember to not over tighten it. And when I'm done using it to release the pressure and unscrew the top so that that doesn't happen again. So otherwise it's been the best spray I've ever had. There are things that I need and I think will be useful. And there's, we don't have to talk, I'll just open it so you can see what's in here. <laughs> Yeah, it's all fertilizer. I think it's all fertilizer, yes. Nelson's slow release, continuous release, hibiscus food. I like this stuff. It has a good NPK rate. Where's the, where'd it go? It's over here. 10, 4, 12. I'd like for the potassium to be higher. That's the potash that's in there, but what can you do? It's not always that easy to find things that have the right ratio for hibiscus. Really, a lot of the rose foods work pretty well for hibiscus. The thing is that hibiscus like a lot of potassium and not much as far as phosphate goes. They are very prone to yellowing out and just turning and looking terrible if they have too much phosphate, phosphorus in their fertilizer. So that was a good ratio. Hidden Valley Hibiscus has, I think, my favorite of the hibiscus fertilizers, but I needed something quick and now, so... I just went with the Nelson. I like how specific they are with their derived from sections. A lot of slow releases aren't like that. And it does let you know how much you're getting everything, whether it's from formaldehyde, nitrogen, ureas, those things. And you don't need all that much of it. A little bit goes a long way with your containers, right? A five gallon pot only needs two tablespoons. And I think that this is, it's either a three month or a six month. Uh, it doesn't say on here, even if it is a six month, I would still reapply every three months just to be safe. That, again, that potassium is really important. It's important period for plants, which I, I can move on and talk about that when I'm talking about the other ones. This right here is a nice big bucket of my favorite liquid fertilizer, and that's the Jack's Classic Petunia Feed. It's a 26-22. Also, pretty good ratio for hibiscus. Potassium's nice and high, phosphorus low, nitrogen pretty high. This is really gonna get them growing. The Classic Petunia Feed, is one that I've liked for a few years, and I don't know how much I've, I know I've talked about it, but I don't know if I've talked about it at length, and one of y'all reminded me that I should really highlight it more. I use this with my flowering plants and my tropicals more than I do most other fertilizers. I like to make sure everything gets hit with an all-purpose fairly often, you know, maybe once a month during the summer. But this is the one that I like to make sure that they're getting specifically from about July and on. Not just because you get great results with it. Your roses, hibiscus, petunias, they should all flower really well with this ratio right here. But it's that high potassium. High potassium is very important for winter survival with plants. And you know, I deal with a lot of plants out here where that is something that is an issue sometimes. So that's another reason that I like this one is because it has that potassium that I like to make sure that all the palms are getting during the winter time. I don't know why I just did that. You probably want to see more of a breakdown in the back of the bucket, don't you? And the other thing that's the most important is that this is designed for plants that don't take up iron efficiently. It even says that basically verbatim on the back here. It has the chelated iron in it, copper and other mechanisms in there to make sure that iron is being absorbed properly by the plants. So you get nice green foliage with the plants. That's something where depending on the pH of your tap water, 
can make a big difference when you're fertilizing your plants as to whether or not iron is going to do anything for them and the Jack's Classic multiples of the types that they sell account for that but the petunia feed is great for those really hungry plants petunias calabrax bacopa verbena vinca salvia at low phosphorus formulation keeps plants fuller there we go right you want too much phosphorus and there you get some lanky looking plants it has a lot of other good stuff in there i like that it has boron and the uh, molybdenum, which I've never been able to pronounce properly, metals and uh, the nitrogen and potassium also are a reason that I really like using this on my palm trees. Speaking of palm tree fertilizers, that leads us to the last one. Perfect palm. Okay, I don't actually have much to say about this one. I haven't tried it before. Palm gain is the classic, the one that pretty much everybody recommends and I have always used for years, but the last couple of years, I haven't really noticed my plants flourishing. Like it used to be if I made sure to use my palm game just a couple of times a year, they did great. I would have lots of nice green foliage, no deficiency issues. That hasn't been the case the last couple of years. I don't know if their formulation changed or if the owner of the company changed. I, it's still doing something for my palm trees. It's typically palms that I have in a very sandy mix like the coconuts where I have to be really on top of making sure that they have their fertilizers in there because that, you know, there's nothing in those sandy mixes, right? And they've done okay. I don't know. It just, it seems like something's changed. Did any of y'all notice that? Something just seems different. And it's kind of pricey. This wasn't cheap either. This was 45 bucks, but you get seven pounds in a bucket. I like the bucket design on it. 13, five, 13. I would do a side to side with the breakdown of everything that's in it compared to Palm Gain, but Palm Gain doesn't list their stuff quite like this. They do, but it's on a crinkly foil bag and it's actually difficult online to find just a sticker that shows what their breakdown is. But looking at it, it's very comparable. The main thing is that it has the manganese, it has the iron, it has the boron, and it has the sulfur. Those are the things that are really important. Oh, and the zinc, it's got the, the metals, it has the metals in it. That's the thing that people are always looking out for when it comes to the palm fertilizers. The percentages are slightly different, but it's not by a significant amount. Boron and magnesium being like the main thing that sets palm gain apart from a lot of other palm fertilizers. And those are things that are starting to be incorporated into most palm fertilizers these days. So I figure if most of them have that in them now, in the specific ratios that they need to be along with other things that are in the fertilizer so it's being uptaken properly that's not the right word <laughs> diffused and all that stuff there's a lot that goes into it i'm not a chemist and i'm not the one to talk to about it. the main thing is that the percentages are comparable they aren't that fall apart fall apart they aren't that far apart so i would think that as long as the ingredients to get those things in here are comparable then it should be a decent fertilizer but don't know for sure gonna give it a try this year and we'll find out here we go. That's the fertilizer part of the haul, except there is one more thing. And that's this one right here. Look at that big daddy. Box got wet because it rained. Don't even need the package to show you what's going on here. Isn't that cool? It's the Hydro Feed. So it's something that I have been interested in for several years is starting to have an inline system for fertilizing. There are a lot of plants out here. It would just make life much more simple. I have in the past used inline feeding through uh, other just like the cheap canisters that you have a small line running into and it works through a venturi action to just slowly distribute the fertilizer into the water line the issue with those is it doesn't mix very well there are larger ones that do have pumps in them that cost hundreds of dollars that mix very very well this was not hundreds of dollars i think it was like 70 bucks it's made by chapin they're a decent brand for the most part you put your granular stuff in the basket if you're using a liquid then you don't use the basket you, you can distribute it down by cranking this knob on top to i think an ounce per gallon i don't know there'll be a whole thing when i get this set up i will probably be mounting this to a pvc frame that i can move around temporarily and if it turns out that's something i really like then i'll get two of them or i'll get one more so i can have one hooked up to my drip over here one to my drip system that's over there and that way I just make sure that my fertilizer is in there and everything's getting fertilized. Don't have to be messing with the hose and the mixing and all that stuff and not the mixing. That's not what it is. The handheld sprayer 
I'm just over it. Yeah, I'm sure y'all can relate. It's something that just gets old after a while. I'm not going to go through and set it all up right now. This isn't a review of the product. Reviews on it are very mixed. I don't have my drip set up right now. I can't even do anything with this just yet. But for the time being, I will use it on my garden hose to fertilize. And I think that that's going to be very nifty. It looks like it holds slightly more in there than the handheld sprayers do. Maybe. I don't know. That was my only thing. There's also, there are a lot of other systems, Easy Flow and uh, Aero Mixer. There are a lot of ways to do inline fertilizing, call it fertigation. That's something I would like to start diving into, but it's expensive. So I thought I'd start from the bottom and work my way up. And this is my bottom. It's right here. That's where I want to get kicked off with that journey of seeing whether or not things work properly. I would like for this basket to be bigger because I'll have to refill that quite often. These things aren't always that easy to remove. I have the tools to remove them though because I have these filters in my house for my water and for the fish tank so that's not that big of a deal. Okay that's everything. I know it was a lot of stuff. I would like to get some planting or some cleanup done in this video. Uh, just the time will tell what happens. I still have to edit the video that comes out on Wednesday and then when, when that's done I will pick up out here. Hopefully weather will be good enough to get some stuff done. Nope. Oh, nope. Oh, well oh, where'd they go? There were a couple of grackles over here and they were hanging out with a robin. I've never seen that before. Usually the grackles are pretty notorious for chasing away other birds. I thought that was odd. Also, I'm seeing a water bottle that's blown over from the construction crew up the hill. I need to pick that up. Uh, it's the next day and they're saying there are going to be some intense storms. I'm just kind of going, oh, I don't really know what I should be doing out here. Moved a few plants outside. A couple of the stromanthes over here. Mr. Freckles, Croton. Hey, not right here. I guess got thirsty last night. I moved these out last evening. I have to clear out a big chunk of my garage and my driveway right now for some electricians that are coming out to install a bunch of lighting and some other things. They're doing work in the house and the construction is back on. I don't think I ever mentioned that the remodel, if you're new here, been remodeling the inside of the house for like the last year. It took about a two month pause and that's resuming today or tomorrow. So my attention from some things out here has been shifted. My God, the flies. It's that time of year, the black flies, you know, the, the teeny tiny little ones, they bite you and then you swell up and it hurts for a few days. You have a bump, at least with me, I end up with a bump on my skin for like a month. May into June, start getting bit by those things. There are some plants over here I could get put into the ground. And yes, there are, there are more plants. I've still been at it, still been picking things up. Maybe some perennials is what I would like to focus on right now, even if it's just a few of the acanthus. I don't want to do anything down on the other side of the yard because there's like 15 construction workers on the other side of the fence right now. And it's just, it's awkward being down there with a the camera. Feels really weird. And there just isn't a ton that I need to do over here on this side. And it's, it's also, it's way too noisy down there. They have some like giant industrial vibrator thing that they're using to jam the soil down. They're putting in turf. Oh, I forgot. That's another thing that came in the Amazon package and I got excited to put it up. Didn't even mention it. It's a trellis. I ordered two so I can show you the rest of it. See, it's expandable like this. I thought that would be the best fit for this area over here because, well, that way I don't have to measure and cut something out to fit. I can just get something where I can expand it how it needs to go. I just use some siding clips to hold it up. I think that'll work fine for the passion flower. They don't get that big and robust here. You know, passion flowers, they can really do their thing. They can be pretty big and take over. But with our winters, it takes them a while to wake up and everything. So this would probably be fine for this year. And then next year, I might need to add this up above it. And if the passion flower comes back, then maybe I'll go ahead and get some vinyl trellis or lattice, that's what it's called, some vinyl lattice and paint it to match the house and actually put it up there. But you can see like there's still trim work and stuff going on outside. So I don't want to do anything permanent. I'm probably just going to be moving it around, right? Maybe taking it down. That's what I meant. Made a dent. It's not much, but it's something. Considering the thunder I've been hearing, I don't, you can't hear it right now. There was just a crack of thunder that was so loud. I could feel it like reverberating in my bones. <laughs> According to the radar, the storm, like the storm's not even close yet. I think it's not even supposed to hit for another hour. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap it up because I need to get the pet carriers and things prepared, you know, the tornado stuff ready, get the cats all locked away into a room so they're easy to catch just in case and lock the parrot up, you know, tornado stuff. But I did get an acanthus put in the ground over here. I. 
this whole area requires some explanation. This side of the garden, I really wanted to do just one fun video of coming in, pulling out all the weeds and remulching, getting all these stones out of here. Those are leftovers from a project that happened in the front yard and cleaning up the edges and just planting up an entire bed. Problem is, that's a thing where it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of materials. So instead of having one fun video where I just do it all, I was like, I think I just need to get moving on some of it. So I got an acanthus put in right there. Another one over here. <laughs> I keep finding lights out here that I need to pick up from the winter time. So I need to pull those up and wrap them up, put them someplace safe. I'll probably be popping another one over here under the K Paris or Paris K Magnolia. Popped an Onothera. You're not gonna be able to see it, but there's a, there's a little primrose up there and a redemption. A Colocasia Redemption right around the corner over here. You're not gonna be able to see it. I'm not going over there right now because there's people everywhere and it just feels weird walking around talking to a camera. I would have brought y'all along with me, but I broke my tripod, which it's fine. It needed to be broken anyways. I've had it for a long time. But didn't need to be broken. That's a weird way to put it. It's been on the verge of breaking for a long time and now it's finally broken. That's what I meant to say. So if you're ordering any one of those, I don't really, is there much, should I be doing things if I can't record it? I don't mind plopping a few things in the ground, but I don't know if I want to do much more than that. Right now though, like I said, I think I need to stop because I need to get ready for the storm. I need to go, there's a drain down here I need to get cleaned out so that if there's a lot of water flowing around, it can get drained out and not flood the pool. It feels so bad, I accidentally threw his toy right in the pool, but yeah, did you hear, you heard that, right? He shouldn't even, he actually shouldn't even be that close to the pole. Turbo, come here. Come on. Get away from the pole. Come over here and hang out with me where it's safe. Underneath this metal thing right next to the body of water. Now, we're going to go inside in just a minute. Storm's still like 12 miles out. That's why I'm anticipating this being very bad. And the weather keeps talking about it being really bad. Here's where I'm at. I was debating putting an acanthus right in front of the uh, hepatitis, hepati no, not hepatitis, heptacodium. They do like sun, but they also need shade in the afternoon in really hot climates, and it's pretty hot here. The issue with this spot I've had with trying to plant hibiscus there, the hardy hibiscus, was that later on in the year, it's too much shade. They don't get enough sun, but I'm thinking that it still might be too much sun for the acanthus. I just I think that would look so pretty right in front of the heptacodium, those big glossy leaves. It looks so nice. And they can handle this. There's a lot of sun in this spot up until like late July, mid-August, somewhere in there. I feel like that's still, you know, it'll probably start popping out of the ground in April or May. So that's April, May, June, July. That's four months of a lot of sun, which is fine in you know, April and even early May when it's not terribly hot outside, but once we're pushing 90s and triple digits, it would probably fry there. So I had another idea that's nowhere near as exciting this time of year, but in the winter, I think I would like it. And that's doing some sort of holly shrub or you, maybe a boxwood, probably not a boxwood. I've had boxwoods over there before. They do really well. They do too well, actually. They just, you have to prune on them constantly. They get really big. I guess there are other varieties now, though. It's been a long time. There are varieties that get to stay smaller. That would be nice during the winter to have something green over here. And uh, the more evergreens you have, the more protection you have from cold, which might be beneficial for those sable miners that are on each side of the heptacodium. But it also just seems like, it seems like such a boring thing to do. Yeah, I'm going to stop for now because of danger. Take the dog inside, gather the pet. We already talked about all that and uh, let me give me time to think on it. Also, there doesn't have to be anything planted in front of this. There will be sun and patience and other annuals planted in the front, so it's not, there doesn't have to be something planted in front of the heptacodium. I was just thinking, you know, I have one extra acanthus, I have the two planted down there, one over there that planted in last week's vlog, and then I have two more, and I want to plant one of them up on the hill, further from the one that I planted down here. Will I be able to get in there? How good is this zoom? Is it good enough? Um, yes, it is. See that, right? Get my finger in there. That's what she said, right about... Uh, that was enough. You saw it. I want to make anybody dizzy. But the acanthus, it's right there. I'd like to plant one up further on the hill. 
which leaves me with one extra. And that's not a problem. I can find another spot to put it. I could just put three of them up on the hill or maybe over here in that corner, though I really don't think that'll be enough white for it, period. Right, do I have an extra? There's three more over there. I wanna plant one more over there, one more up that hill. Yeah, so I have one more. And it's not, I could end up putting four over there if need be, and I could end up putting three up on that hill if I need to. That was a whole lot of this. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that was just me wrapping up my thoughts in case I forget to talk about it tomorrow. Maybe I'll do something over there. I don't know. And for now, it's, it's time to go. Got to get inside, and I think it's supposed to do this for the rest of the day, so hopefully it'll be better tomorrow. But where'd you go? There was a dog here. There's Toby. Hey, Tobes. All right, this is irrelevant. It has nothing to do with anything that's been going on in the video, but look at, do you see the spotlight? Got a spotlight over here. You have no background information. The electricity out here has been broken for years, like eight to 10 years, something like that. There's been power over here on this wall and then basically everything from here and over on the patio has had power, right? There's a light over there. It's always worked for the most part. But there are outlets. There's an outlet over here underneath that lamp. There's an outlet over here under the mimosa. There's an outlet up there on the hill. And there are speakers and things built in the landscape. They haven't worked in years. And today, which maybe I talked... I don't know if I talked about it before. Any, I, I have no idea. Maybe I talked about it. But the electricians came, who I've been waiting for months to show up here because of lighting and a bunch of... I'm pretty sure I talked about it. But they came through and they fixed all the outlets down here. So look, there's light. There's light under the mimosa tree. It doesn't look like much right now, but just imagine when the mimosa is flushed out with foliage, having that all lit up from underneath. Actually, that looks really pretty right now. I need to get it set up on a timer and I'm gonna get spotlights to go up on the laurel hedge down there. It's gonna be so pretty. I'm so excited. I cannot wait for this to finally have foliage on it. It just started, but you can't see that. It's too dark. You get it. I'm so excited. We're gonna be able to do things with lighting from this area and down this year, because up until now, it's been basically just from right here and over, been able to play with landscape lighting. So assuming these outlets keep working, they should be able to put lights in over there. They did get fixed winter of 2022 or 2023, and then come spring, they didn't work anymore. That was a different electrician, the one who did the heater in the garage, which also is broken, by the way. Haven't talked about that. It just is was putting out heat. I was in there and I was like, hey, it feels like the sun's beating down on my neck, yet the heater wasn't on. And I put my hand up there. I was like, oh, the heating elements are running, but the fan isn't. So I went downstairs, flipped the breaker off on that thing. That's a, We'll get to that in the fall. That's why I don't use that electrician anymore. I have a whole new crew and they're fantastic they're firefighters they like go through the house and tell me everything that i'm doing wrong with absolutely everything which is appreciated for safety and they got all these things working and put lights up in my office which i've been waiting since fall of 2020 There's so many exciting things happen today nothing gardening related but i thought i'd just to catch everybody up because this is exciting i'm gonna be able to have lights out here i cannot wait i'm so excited okay that's enough of that toby you're not supposed to be laying down you're supposed to be going potty it's bedtime toby come on get up let's go potty Let's go potty. Come on, Tobes. Come on, Toby. Good boy. I'll pick up in the morning, we'll pop some more plants in the ground, and wrap this thing up. You gonna do it? You gonna do it? Go get it. Get your toy. Ah, there we go. We decided to take the safe route and use the steps. Very smart of him. He's having the time of his life. He hasn't been in that pool in like three weeks because he had kennel cough. No surprise. Dog park. He's vaccinated for it. They have to be vaccinated to go to the dog park, but day one of the year back at the dog park and he got sick it's just it's a problem right now you know if the dogs the vaccine isn't really working all that well which is why the manufacturers of vaccine covered all the treatment so that's good it's been a couple weeks he's not contagious anymore so i don't have to quarantine him at the house when the stuff you saw of him at the dog park i think last week remember that was from like two weeks ago maybe two and a half weeks ago. So the point he hasn't been able to get in the pool because he's supposed to be resting and taking it easy. And he's been so good the last couple of days with all the different people coming and going from the house. I thought it would be nice to let him come out here and do some swimming. And there's your turbo update that you didn't know that you needed. So I started to lay out some plants, the impatience, see him down there. And then uh, I was about to grab my auger and start planting and everything. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this without a tripod so uh, this is just i guess i'll just wait till next week the tripod's supposed to get here tonight but this video comes out tomorrow 
so that's really not any use to anybody. I just, it's, it's a lot. I'm gonna be planting a lot of stuff, so I can wait one more day. I'll work on that tomorrow. The way I have things laid out is pretty good. We can catch up on all that later. There's a decent dent made in everything over there. All the little stuff, the acanthus and those things, and I don't know how much anybody cares about me getting those planted, but the big stuff where I'm gonna be adding tons of color, I figure that should probably be documented. And there's some other planters and things happening that'll be in a video, I believe, on Wednesday. So I'm just, I'm just gonna wrap it up. I had a good time, got some stuff opened up, finally got the hibiscus fertilizers in, so those are all taken care of. Now I'm looking forward to getting that fertigation thing set up at some point. Now, especially now that I have a hose. That's the biggest thing for me, is that I finally have a hose out here with a functional hose reel. It's not the best hose reel. I think I should have gone up a size. Uh, also, I think I said that this was the 150 foot hose reel before. This is the one for the 200 feet of hose, and it's, it's still, it has some issues, right? I mean, you see how the hose comes off of it, pulling the hose out from it so far, not that easy. The next size up when it goes to either 225 or 250 feet of hose, it was like another $130. It went from 150 to 280. I didn't, I didn't, I don't want to spend that, and I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to give this another week or two and see if I find it to be really annoying as far as, like, the ease of pulling the hose in and out of it. But so far, I'm just happy to have a hose reel that works with the three-quarter inch hose. Maybe not that attractive, but it works. And once I have this area all fixed up over here and this put back into the garden, I don't really know how noticeable it's even going to be, right? As this needle palm grows in this corner right here, that's a needle palm. <laughs> we talked about like 10 years from now when that's maybe a foot bigger. You, it'll be blocking that view completely. As it is right now, the crinum lily that's right next to the needle palm, it's already blocking the view. It's a little detail that I was hung up on. I've decided that I don't really think it's a big deal and it doesn't matter. Yeah, as I was going through everything over here and trying to prioritize what needed to be planted up right away, I realized the sun and patience should really take priority because they've been here the longest and they're smashed up together. So see what was happening over here to some of them because there's not enough room for them, right? So I got half of those unloaded. This other half I can spread apart. I think I'll be getting all these planted up at the same time tomorrow morning or Sunday. Sunday, happy Mother's Day, by the way. Happy early Mother's Day. Yeah, this comes out before Mother's Day, I think. I think. I know it does. Videos come on Saturdays. Mother's Day is always on Sunday. So, yeah. That's where I'm with all that. There are some new things over here. I was thinking about maybe putting sweet potato vines in front of the impatience this year. We'll see. I'm still thinking about that, but I grabbed a few just in case. Storm knocked some things over. Found these giant, massive hula pink hanging baskets. The hula pink begonias. I tried them last year. Had them hanging up in the palm trees. I overwintered it too because I didn't know if I'd be able to find them for sale. That's all, that's all that did. Looks great, doesn't it? Oh, it looks better before I brought it outside. It's going through a transitional period, but these were at Ace Hardware. They're like 20 bucks. Look at how big these things are. They're just monsters. They're gonna keep growing. I don't think these will divide all that well. That's my only concern with them. I buy a lot of the hanging baskets so that I can divide them up and use them in other containers, but I just, I don't know. They feel like they'll break and fall apart if I try and divide them up. So if I can't divide them up, that's okay. They'll still look beautiful wherever I put them in a big display as they are in our hanging baskets. There's nothing wrong with that. And this is another reason that I need to go ahead and get things in the ground this weekend. One, I need to get everything off the patio. Palm trees are going to be here sometime in the next two weeks. I don't know when for sure. And a lot of them go over here. And also just the sooner you get them in the ground, the better for growth, right? But yeah. So once tomorrow passes, which will be in next week's video, have all these sun and patience taken care of. It's going to free up this space right here and I can move the annuals that need to be wait to be planted until the palm trees get here up into that spot right there and that will free up some space. A lot of the other things that are out here are for other projects at other people's homes so it's not, I don't know if we'll be filming those things or not but I'll try and at least take pictures when I'm working on those projects. Hi baby. I know. He's so happy right now. It's such a good day in the pool. Oh yeah and whatever machine they're using up there today it's way louder than the stuff they're using last summer uh, right now they're using something that's not too bad they're putting down gravel and leveling out an area there's like a, a giant compactor it's loud so that's also been a problem so i was like you know maybe i'll just wait until tomorrow it'll be a weekend they won't be out here i'll have the tripod it just makes the most sense that way oh hello look at you looking good i'm loving this hibiscus it's been so prolific 
considering it really just gets part sun over here in this spot that it's just been blooming up a storm. Doesn't seem to mind the lack of light at all. Going off into tangents that we don't need to be going off and I also found some bromeliads on Clarence at Home Depot. They're like four bucks a pop. Aren't they beautiful? I love them. I had to get three of them. They look so good when they're together. I'm not gonna keep them like that, but for now, that's just where I had to put them because it's the only shady spots and it's still waiting on the sun to shift and for some more of the trees to flush out, which is another reason I haven't brought many of the palms out or many of the plants in the garage, period, is because, well, the mimosa tree's taking its sweet time to flush out this year, so there's not many shady spots to put the plants. So it's gonna have to wait, hopefully soon. I'd like to do that this weekend. So I'm thinking next weekend's video is probably gonna be pretty busy. <laughs> I'm gonna be planting uh, probably close to 100 plants, if not more, depending on if I tackle this area down here and then bring the plants out. I should probably wrap this up. I need to conserve my voice for tomorrow. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Comment down below, say hi. Hope you all are doing well again. Happy Mother's Day. If any of y'all tried the Shapin pass-through fertilizer thing, I have medium hopes for it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I haven't tried it yet, so I can't really say much about it. But I'm looking forward to getting that set up because I think it's going to make fertilizing a lot faster and easier out here when I can just run it right through the drip irrigation. Ooh, and I should order some lighting to put in down here now that I have a spot to plug it in. One, two, three, four. There's five florals. And then the mimosa. The lights that are there right now isn't one that I'd want to actually keep out here. It's a bit too much. Yeah, that's something to think about. Be looking into some lighting. Uh, it's exciting. I get really into lighting out here. Summertime, nighttime, it's my favorite thing. The warm summer nights, there's always a nice gentle breeze. Things smell nice because a lot of the flowers, like the petunias and the alyssum, tend to be very fragrant in the evening. Yeah, like I said, comment down below. Let's go in your gardens or just say hi. Love talking to everybody. I just moved these out. They already got scorched. I stuck them back here fairly far. I guess I need to move them back a little bit further. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.